There's all familiar faces here, but just to uh, make sure we do what we need to do, if anyone needs a restroom, you can go out the door to the right down the hall. If you need to vacate the building for any reason whatsoever, we go back down the steps, out the front door, turn left, and our rallying spot is in the employee parking lot uh, at the bottom of the hill, or toward the bottom of the hill behind, behind this building. Uh, thanks. Good to see everyone. We're live at Route29Solutions.org, and if you're watching on streaming and you go under the panel tab, you'll find the agenda and the presentation for today's uh, for today's meeting. There, we'll go around with. Uh, I did know that Brad and Chip were not going to be here. There's another county city yeah, meeting. I, th I think. I'm no, I don't know what that stands for, but it's some joint meet, meeting. Um, I expect that we will see Henry and Karen. I don't know about the mayor. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get a quick round of introductions. Chris. Chris Engel with the city of Charlottesville. Mark Graham, Albemarle County. Morgan Butler, Southern Environmental Law Center. Pete Bush is CMA Properties. Luke. Lou Hatter, 29 Communications Manager. Hal Jones, BDOT, Charles Smith. John Lynch, BDOT, Culpeper District. <coughs> Colla, BDOT, Research Council. <coughs> Debbie Messina, Elevation Cat Company. Dave Covington, BDOT, Charlottesville Residency. Joel Lenzia, BDOT, Charlottesville Residency. All right, thank you much. Um, for our uh, streaming, I changed this a little bit to look at year over year instead of just from one meeting to the next because I think the business person in me, that makes more sense, sense to me. Um, 63 uh, viewers at our August 6th meeting, uh, 95 streams and about 13 short, short views for each, for each stream. But, Folks still tuning in. That's fine. Um, we had <clears throat> 10 comments that were emailed in to the inbox, and we'll review those. One uh, new posting on the uh, website to provide input piece, and I believe that was just me sending out a new little Twitter feed that's been established for the project. Uh, no calls into the project uh, project hotline. Of those comments that were mailed in, five of them were uh, related to the Hillsdale Greenbrier intersection. Three people uh, just wrote to say they support the signal there, and two of the notes were just thanking VDOT for clarifying the decision process. And just as a reminder, um, that noise, we'll talk a little bit about that in the Hillsdale update, I think, but that noise analysis is being reviewed and will be resubmitted to to VDOT, not noise, traffic warrant, traffic signal warrant analysis uh, will be reviewed and resubmitted to VDOT and we'll have some decision there in uh, in September. Hi Henry, how are you? Thank you. Uh, two people requested to be added to the project email list and they were added. Uh, one business on Rydal Road West asked about just seeing some information so he could uh, or they could distribute to their customers about access and I believe Lou is touch base with them and is arranging uh, to meet with that business owner and share some information. One person suggested or requested that there be a pedestrian crossing and signal phasing at the Woodbrook, Woodbrook Route 29 intersection, and that's not part of the plan, right, Dave? So that's that's not something that would be going in. And then there was one uh, one person wrote in with a lot of suggestions about improvements on other areas of Route 29 outside of the uh, outside of the project area. Uh, were there any, just flip back a minute, any questions on these issues? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Linda. Um, 
follow-ups from uh, from the last meeting, arrange a field visit to the Northwest Region Traffic Operations Center. Uh, I think that's a good idea, and my thought is to use one of the days that we already had planned for a meeting to, to do that, and I would suggest one of these dates in October. Uh, doesn't have to be one of those dates in October. Uh, it's just a Sooner or later, we've got to narrow down some, some dates. That's something that I can send out to the full panel and you can chew on for a few days. And then, I guess, Joel, we would, we would work with you to arrange that, arrange that trip. If you recall, we talked about this a few times to go to Stanton and take a look at the uh, Traffic Operations Center, get a little demonstration of how the fate or uh, how the uh, adaptive signal phase one is is working and hang out there and have a, have a meeting there. I think as long as we know enough in advance that we meet our requirements for telling folks that we're meeting and we're meeting there, I don't believe it's, you know, if we go a meeting without live streaming, we go a meeting without live streaming. We'll, we'll work through, through that. So I'll get See if you want to if you want to do that, or let me know that you don't want to use a, a regular meeting a meeting date for this trip. And we'll figure that out. Figure that out as well. We've talked a couple times about um, the uh, plans for architectural landscape treatments and the plans for lighting the local lanes. And what I've asked Dave to do is let's at the next meeting want to have a schedule on or before the next meeting so that we'll know when we're going to see revised architectural landscape plans and the plans for lighting and local lanes. And I know Dave's already talked with the contractor and by the next meeting we won't have those plans but we'll have a schedule so we'll be aware of when those plans are when those plans are coming. So one quick question on the prior item. Would we basically not be able to do much in the way of business when we go to visit? No, I think we would. I we think still, we'd be able to still like, still do our still do some business. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there was like a conference room where we'd be able to sit down or just be hovering over. I'd be yeah. shocked if there wasn't a conference room. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Okay. So we we could have a meeting. We could do business, and right. part of the business would be to right. Got it. get. A Okay. Thank you. Uh, Pete, any item trying to get on the board for next? Morgan? Oh, thanks. Mark? Okay. Chris? Henry? Uh, how much time do I have? <laughs> for this part? Uh, okay. 30 seconds. No, Pete. Okay. No. Uh, just on what, what came up here. We yes. Going into my homework, which yes. Is probably later on I have a chance. Um, Woodbrook uh, 29 pedestrian crossing uh -huh. was dismissed out of hand. We're doing work there. There's a lot of shopping on one side and a lot of residential on the other. Right now, people have to get in their car to move 200 yards. Uh, isn't it time to put a pedestrian crossing there? Yeah, Henry, I'm, I, it's just, it's not part of this project. So I, well, I mean, we're working on that intersection, aren't we? Or are we not doing anything? That's where the project ends. ends. That's the very well, on end. which side of it does it end? <laughs> South or north? Probably the middle of the air. <laughs> the middle. Yeah. Okay. Is it? And then put the, the, <clears throat> the crossing on the I mean, I, I believe that might be a discussion for a future project. It's just not part I, of this. Well, I talked to David Benish, I think it was last week, and I think the county is currently looking at is it four locations for future four. projects. And that could be one of them. I don't think they've been scoped out yet. Mm -hmm. Way back when, before the widening of 29, the decision was made, let's talk about the pedestrian crossings later. And that was, whatever, 15 years ago, <laughs> still hasn't happened. So I see construction going on. Mm -hmm. This is so, so minor, and it's somewhere on the boundary. <clears throat> don't ask me exactly where it is, I guess we don't know. 
but uh, this would be a great opportunity to put that in. I mean, we, we pay all that lip service to better access to pedestrians and, uh, you know, make it work of the communities and a neighborhood model. And well, there's a neighborhood right there, there's shopping right there. And when it comes, you know, the rubber to meet the road, somehow we drop the boat. So I think if maybe it's an I'm a, I'm a, I may suggest that's a tad bit harsh, but okay, I hear you. Yeah, well, I, I'm making an editorial comment. Yeah, okay. I, I think it should be done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the opportunity in, okay. in terms of the overall project. It's uh, whatever, hundreds of, uh, maybe thousands of 1% of the cost of the project. So it's, it's, it's well, I just. Incidental. So I, I think it's a lost opportunity if we don't do it. Okay. And maybe the county needs to, uh, you know, put the pressure. I don't know, Mark. Maybe it's your baby. It, 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 just in all, just I'm just a citizen. Yeah. No. I, no. No. I, I hear you. In all likelihood, it's not going to be something that will be done as part of this project. If there's a desire to continue to discuss that as a separate project between VDOT or the county or or is that VDOT continue to look at that intersection, I think that's fine. And it has been looked at, and it's, it's going to be looked at again as part of the small area plan. Yeah, okay. Uh, we, we've obviously recognized that there's a lot of issues right. when you try to get uh, people across 10 lanes of traffic yeah. and uh, trying to keep the traffic moving at the same yeah. time. And that's one of the reasons why Places 29 talked about separating the pedestrians from that traffic. With the pedestrian overpasses. Yeah, I don't believe anyone. The response here is not that that's a bad idea. Right. It's just not part of this project. Are useless. They are very expensive, and, they, and people don't use it. People will just walk across. Unless you put a chain link fences on both sides so that they have to get on it, you, you want to be able to do it. So, anyway. Doing, nothing that's a part of this project would preclude the county does come back after doing a small area plan and say, Hey, you know what? That's a great location. We're actually better down there. Nothing in this project will preclude that from happening, right? And right. No, no, nothing. No. Doing nothing no. does not preclude doing something. But what I'm saying is, you're already there. We're already modifying the intersection because we're doing something with a turn mm -hmm. movement that's going to be different. So we're there. I mean, I, I don't want to belabor this, but uh, I think that uh, if we had a little bit of vision, you would do it. My editorial comment. And the next item is architectural treatment, mm -hmm. uh, lighting, pedestrian lighting. Yes. And you know, I was a little bit disturbed that everything that Morgan Butler, who generally is my opponent, had proposed has been knocked down. And the one thing I want to make a little bit of a rear card action is on the lighting. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of things with the lighting. Uh, yes, if you stagger the lighting poles, it's the most efficient. Uh, as an engineer who did lighting at mm -hmm. one time, a long time ago, yes, you know, I would do that if that was my parking lot or my utilitarian expressway. But if we're doing something here that has a little bit more of architectural treatment, it's more urban, the least I can ask for is, you know, pairs of opposing light poles all along the way, which is what they proposed, if I'm correct. And um, yes, it increases the cost because you'll have more poles. Uh, you may even have lower poles, and uh, but it will look aesthetically pleasant. So the the engineering reads says, yeah, sure, stack it. Mm -hmm. the, somebody who's a grandson of an architect, the father of an architect, a few other uh, designers and artists, uh, I, I, I would side with the architects that that is, yes, it's a cost, cost increase, mm -hmm. but uh, it would make the thing a lot more pleasant looking, you know, more like it's designed rather than just done by, you know, standard issue we don't. And the next thing, rather than lighting, and we're talking about pedestrian lighting. Before we leave that item, yeah. um, as I understood it, you said that they knocked down everything, but actually several of the suggestions are being incorporated in some form or another, at least they're causing them to rethink some of these items. And one of them, if I understood correctly, Philip, is that the lighting plan for the local lanes 
we're going to put our resources into having more aesthetically pleasing lighting. Bill, at the point I made, but let's focus on the local lanes where there's going to be more of an effort to have pedestrians and where we want it to look better. So, yeah, actually, I agree with you. It'd be great if we could do them both, but if we only have enough resources to do one or the other, I, I like the idea of focusing on better lighting. Again, what's the size of the project, the resources? Uh, we're talking about fractions of a fraction of the percent. Well, pro pro the only thing I'll say there is pro projects go over a budget a dollar at a time. Yeah, I know. So fra fractions are yeah, Im been, important. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's not, as far as that point goes, uh, I'm personally very interested in the lighting plans on the local lanes, and we can go back and have another discussion about the lighting on the, the through lanes. I, I don't know that the view would change, but I, I, I hear you. I the hear next you. thing, while we're at lighting, I want to make a case. Don't look at the pedestrian lighting separately from the roadway lighting, because I would like to see something that's integrated where the lighting fixtures kind of resemble each other, match uh -huh. each other. Not that, okay, here's design A, and here's design B, and they don't talk to each other. Again, I'm, I'm talking as a, you know, amateur frustrated architect, not uh, as an engineer. Uh, that's a good point. As an engineer, I said, how is all of this? Uh, what? <laughs> I think it's a good point. <laughs> Okay. That's been a little, a little tough on the engineers, isn't it? Well, I, mean, no, no, I think no, we're no. doing a pretty good job. I, I understand the engineers. I'm one of them, okay? I, I know what's wrong with us, okay? <laughs> but uh, in this case, I, I conceded to uh, designers and architects. Well, I feel like we're in a counseling session. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I <laughs> okay. Uh, but I want to make the point that uh, okay. if you give some thought, you want to have that integrated. And I can see that some of the things that were proposed, like putting bricks on the Jersey barriers would not work. I understand that. Now, mixing uh, a pigment into those Jersey barriers that is maybe the color of brick mm -hmm. may be a possibility. But uh, anyway, mm -hmm. leave it there. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, Okay, we'll we'll take those forward and let's think about that. Is we've got designers here. Keep that in mind as we're putting these local lighting, yeah. local lane lighting plans together. I I do I agree that there should be some integration so visually it doesn't look like you're in two different worlds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll have to see how all that shakes I out. I think that can help a lot. All, integrating. All the more important reason to get a schedule so that we know when these things are coming and we know that we'll have some time to really, to really dig in. And, uh, just thinking about what Henry said here, he may have struck a good point there in that, um, you know, I remember reviewing the budget and mm -hmm. we're coming right in at where the money is, but mm -hmm. you also have a sizable contingency in there. Maybe we should be thinking about a number of enhancements that depending on how much we have left, when we get down to the end of these projects, that we can apply to apply to those enhancements. For better or for worse, I've been working on enhancements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get close, and then you start looking at what 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 other features did you want to add in? Once you know you've got the money for. Well, let's well, let's see where we are at that. At don't want to spend we, the money when, when we, we get it. to that point in time. No, I, I'm not yeah. saying that. I mean, we're we're spending some we're spending some additional money to do additional things that some people aren't pleased that we're spending. I'm, I'm, in terms of communications, but I think it's real important to to do it. But anyway, no, thanks, Andrew. thanks. I think that's one of the problems thanks. with design build that there's always this tension you know, that. In a design big build, you got your chance. Well, just not to get in that long discussion, but but trust me, if this was design bid build, every time we talked about turning this car this way, oh, no, we'd no. be talking about spending more money. Oh, no, we no. have a lot more flexibility well, with what say, we're doing. With that system, you have to do it all on paper. Yeah, with 100%. We've got paper. a lot more flexibility. Because if you didn't, you're in trouble. Uh, there are a lot of different views on which would be. But here, since we have design build, uh, okay. 
in some areas, we'd like to have a little bit of enhanced design. I appreciate Morgan reminding us that it's not as if we're okay. not doing anything. Okay. I'm glad that other people are raising this point because it has been a consistent theme from the panel. So wherever there is room to try to fit these things in. And I think Mark's point is a good one, but I'd also like, when we get to the end of building the projects, we're not going to be able to go back in and change the Jersey barrier at that point. So some of these things we need to figure out. No, we're not going to be, we're, I think what Mark was talking about was, at least as I heard it, other features that might be possible. So we'll keep an eye on that as we move forward. Look, I'm as interested as anybody in seeing the architectural treatment plans because we've spent over a year in talking about that. We do have a lot of good suggestions. And because they cost money, I don't expect that to be the first reason the one gets rejected. If it has a design implication, I understand that. But I'm anticipating a robust, more robust than we've seen, submission on these architectural treatments and the local lighting plans. And I'm hopeful that's what we'll see. On the Jersey barrier, the Jersey barrier is not a barrier. It's 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 a bar
Long 250 is a high risk item. It's it's a major component of the project, so that's what we're watching very closely are those major components to make sure that nothing falls behind the schedule. We do monitor the schedule on a monthly basis when we receive payment applications to make sure that they're not falling behind schedule. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Move on to the adaptive signals. Uh, work this week at the Woodbrook Burkmar intersection, that signal rebuild is primarily uh, they're supposed to install the signal foundations first. They kind of switched that sequence a little bit and decided to do the boring under the road first. So that's what they're working on this week. You have a boring machine out there right now. Uh, really not much impact to traffic uh, to bore underneath the road. Uh, then they will begin the construction of the signal foundations. They're still on schedule to complete that uh, by November, I believe it was, before the end of November. So it's done well in advance of next summer when more traffic is expected to use Burkmar uh, to get around the, the Rio GSI project. Um, so this is the boring condo. It just got moved up to this week. Uh, foundations gets, the beginning of foundations gets moved to next week. Any questions on that work? Okay, excellent. Rio grade separated intersection, they have completed Duck Bank A in the Northeast Quadrant. This was a big element of work. This is one of the high risk items on the project. Most of the utilities go through that Duck Bank when they are relocated. Uh, today and tomorrow, they are running mandrels through the Duck Bank, which ensures that they can actually pull utilities through so they don't try to relocate utilities and realize they can't get them through. So far, everything is checked out. They will complete that work tomorrow. Uh, Duck Bank B has been completed in the Northwest Quadrant. Again, this was directional boring, a lot of underground stuff. You don't see big open trenches. Uh, complete the temporary signal installations. Uh, those are just about done. There's a couple of other little items that need to be done there. Uh, I believe in about nine or 10 days, Dominion Virginia Power will get power to those signals so that they're ready for September 9th to be activated uh, on that date. Uh, begin excavation and construction of temporary crossovers. If you've driven through there recently, you've seen that this work is ongoing. They've completed the excavation on both of them. I think they've got the one just south of Myers Drive, uh, backfilled with stones. They're on schedule for that work. Continue waterline relocation. Um, we had another progress meeting last night on that that does uh, continue. They'll be getting out in the road very shortly here. Uh, issue approval for construction plans that is in the works right now. These are the 100% plans that we just recently reviewed. Uh, so we expect that, that by early next week we'll have all the approvals for the roadway plans and very shortly after that the bridge plans as we move forward. Now, Henry, that does not mean these plans can't be amended. They will certainly be amended with other features, but we need to get to the point where we can get to construction and start building the items that aren't going to change, the retaining walls, the temporary widening, those things. Uh, right away negotiations uh, continue and will continue probably for the next couple of weeks, if not longer. Go to the next slide, please. And then work next week, I mentioned connecting power to the temporary signals at Burke Moore and the one just south of Myers Drive um, that, that's on schedule. Paved the turn lanes and crossovers next week. Uh, place the pavement in the SunTrust parking lot. Duck Bank A, uh, we, we never lost service at SunTrust. We were always able to maintain traffic through their drive through Right now it's got coal patch, which is kind of what people use to patch their driveways. It's functional, but it's not pretty. So next week, Lane Coleman is going to go in, pave that area that was disturbed, restripe their parking along the retaining wall so that we can uh, make sure that they're back to where they were before that work began. And again, right away negotiations continuing. Do we have any questions on Rio GSI project and the work that's currently going on? Well, September 9th is when the uh, two traffic lights uh, are eliminated. Yes. And I just uh, either don't remember if we ever talked about it before or not. But in my mind, that thing was going to happen sometime in March, April in preparation for the 103 days, but it's happening now. Uh, we're we're going to talk about it a little more on item seven or eight of our agenda. About this issue? Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. Because yes. It somehow uh, caught me by surprise. Yeah. We discussed it in <coughs> generalities um, in the, when we were developing the RFP, but of course we didn't have a contract and a design builder who has their own sequence of construction and method of how they're going to build the, the intersection. So it may have changed a little bit. I don't think we ever talked about any specific dates. Well, as I say, I, I had a date in my own mind uh, mm -hmm. that it would be before uh, May 23rd, but maybe a couple months before. Not at, uh, you know, One thing, and I do not want year. to imply that this is certainly not the reason why those signals are being deactivated now. They do necessarily need to be deactivated for construction activities, but a benefit is that these crossovers go in now, and people have all this time to learn how to use them so that next summer when the Rio crossover closes, they already know how to use them, they know how to get around, local people especially, and we're not changing multiple things, it's more of a phased change. But that's not the reason why it's happening now, but there's a secondary benefit. There's probably some benefit to it, but, uh, and the other thing I do remember is that Fashion Square was told that they wouldn't have any impact uh, until after the holiday season. And this is actually affecting Fashion Square now. Um, no, we have a specific exclusion in the contract. We weren't talking about this holiday season, but any holiday season as far as what work can or can't be done on their property. Okay. This is all within existing right-of-way uh, where the the crossover is being closed and the signal is deactivated. Okay. Let's develop one. Any other questions on Rio GSI? Okay. 29 widening work this week. Um, I'm sure all of you saw, if you drove up that way, a portable changeable message sign on the side of the road that said traffic patterns changing, I believe, as of yesterday. Um, that pattern change was simply a restriping to shift traffic over a little bit so the barrier wall could be installed on the median. Uh, we've been talking for the past few meeting, meetings about the advanced work package being approved, them starting work in the median in non-jurisdictional areas within existing right-of-way uh, earlier than the rest of the project. That's what this is for. Uh, those lines were restriped, I believe, Tuesday evening. Last night there wasn't any work due to rain, but tonight they will be starting setting barrier wall along the inside of the northbound lanes. So that work will occur this week. Um, the temporary signs have already been installed. Right away appraisals are continuing, finishing up. Uh, and next week they will continue barrier wall installation if they do not finish it all this week. And they will mill the southbound lanes. This is where they come through with a milling machine. I'm sure you've seen milling and overlay. Uh, they'll mill it and then they're going to do a, a build up of asphalt on the inside to get the, the slope correct on the southbound lanes and then they will begin uh, offers to landowners along that property next week for the right of way process any comments or questions about 29 lighting okay work more extended uh, this week the design builder actually just sent uh, comment responses to VDOT. We're having a meeting to go over those tomorrow afternoon. So we, this is from the 60% plan comment review. Uh, also, they are continuing doing appraisals this week and next week. So we are moving toward the 60% plan submittal was a right-of-way submittal. So we're moving toward resolving those comments and issuing notice to commence right-of-way acquisition on that project in the next week or two. So that they can negotiate with property owners. Any comments or questions on Burkmar? So I have um, a bunch of little things, but I don't know if you want to spend time now. Maybe. Oh, you have comments from the plan review? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should do it after the meeting. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. You, is there anything in general you want to share with the panel? Or oh, you want one, one of those of my editorial comments. <laughs> I have one. And that editorial comment has to do with Ashwood uh, Boulevard and Holiday Drive. There again, we're doing, you know, spending millions on engineering, and for whatever reasons, the powers to be didn't want to touch the extensions. But 
as a citizen, as a taxpayer, I think it would make so much sense to at least engineer those connections so that they're engineered enough that you could determine what the right of the future right of way would be for those and that that's already documented and taken care of. That it's not something that later on people will say, oh damn it, if we had just tweaked this a little bit, we could have done this, but now we're frozen into this. But if you had done it, again, for a small incremental cost, at least would say, and when the county wakes up that they actually want to do it, all they have to do is pick up the plans and say, here, this is what we need to do. No stub outs, none of that. We discuss stub outs and all that. None of that. But at least on paper, you know, a few more pages, you're done. Well, you have duly noted, and we have designed the roadway to not preclude any connections, any future connections to those roadways. Now, as far as establishing the right-of-way limits, we have not yeah. done that. Well, what I'm saying is go a little bit further, document it, because as you said, you already have done homework, but you know, 10 years from now, nobody will remember what you did. But if right. you put it on paper, there's a chance that people will dig it out and say, oh, this is what these guys had in mind. Yeah. When, when we dis discussed that, there, there was, if you'll recall, I said that should the county request VDOT to add any of this work to the project, that I was, I was willing to go to the Commonwealth Transportation Board and request the additional funds. I mean, I, I, that's where we still are. The REO, not just the county. I think it's how it was the county. The board, the board took it up specifically. <coughs> and, I mean, the, the, the thing that was so frustrating with that was that it's in the six-year plan. It's it's documented as, as something the county wants. I mean, it, it's, it's in the places 29 plan. But, and, and so all of that planning was used to, to, to support the idea of all these projects we're doing today. But somehow the same language that referred to the Ashwood Boulevard connection wasn't official or wasn't substantial enough to, to motivate the county. Um, two sides of the coin. But the reality is that, that Phillip's right. I mean, he stood right here and said he, he would take it. The county shot it down. I'm very much for it, by the way. I mean, I'm not. To build it, you would have to go to the Commonwealth Transportation Board and request, you know, a few million to do some preliminary engineering that's good enough uh, that you, you can document where they go, these connections. Uh, that would probably not well, require. Yeah, that, actually, it would. It, it would. I mean, because now, without belaboring it, because now you get into a longer discussion about right of way and where it may or may not be. And yeah, well, that's a that hard requires hard. different. That also requires some different approvals. I I think that one is where it where it is. Well, to establish right of way, we have to go through a public hearing process. What a, we a potential. It's it's a documented potential. It's a bit. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking for uh, something that you may be able to put inside this project, uh, where you have done your homework, and say, okay, here, this this is one way to do it. And obviously, you already have done some of this from what you tell me. The only thing is, can you document it so that uh, at least it's you know it doesn't become a big mystery. You know if can go back later on if and when you know the county wants to do it, the MPO wants to do it, uh, then they can look at it and say, yeah, this is the way it gets done. Well, Unfor well look, unfortunately, yeah. we that's not how it necessarily could ha happen. We're, we're just not in a position to move something forward with that. And I'm not trying to make this hit the county against V dot or anything nah. else. But I was you know, when it came up, there was some pushback that said, no, there's other connections in that would need to be considered. I'm still willing to make good on, on making appropriate changes or supporting the appropriate changes if they're requested to be, to be made. So. And, and I think in, in addition to that, you know, we have a contract. 
and that's not in our contract for the design builder to do. You didn't at the time this was discussed. No, I understand. I'm talking about right now. This was discussed. Yeah, I'm talking about discussed. I don't know a year ago. So we're talking about a change to the contract. And the other thing is there's environmental implications of adding that to this project that we don't want to confuse the issue with the permitting agencies because there are environmental impacts associated with those connections that are separate and distinct from the Burt Marr extension. Well, all I'm saying is maybe you can document a study on paper. Right. But that would be separate than this project. Okay. Again, it's just an editorial comment from a regular citizen. Sure. I see the opportunity there. It's a lot. It's going to be a lot more work later on where people don't even remember what you what you got. Well, fortunately, we have the plans from this project. So they know they know this. They don't know what what you had in mind, how it could probably connect, because you already said you've made some tweaks to make sure it could connect. Well, all I'm asking is, can that be documented as a study annex? Well, and I think it quite honestly has. We had multiple alternatives that we took to public hearing. And then we came out of that with the preferred alternative that was quite honestly facilitated future connection. I'm sure that if I sit you down with these plans and I give you a pencil, you draw it for me. The thing is, I'm pretty sure you won't. I'm sure you can. Okay. Enough said. Anything else? So, Henry, then you'll share you'll share these plan comments. Right. Okay. All right. Can I ask another question about the park one? I'm sorry, Henry. Were you done? I didn't mean to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've asked a thousand times. But the structure, the bridge, do we have a, I mean, I know that we're only building it so that we can handle one lane in each direction. Do we have a real understanding of what the cost would be to build that structure wide enough to add a second lane in each direction at some point? In the future or as part of this? No, as part of this project. What's the cost that we're supposed to pay? $8 million, I believe. Would be the difference in that structure? An additional $8 million. To build it wide enough, not a second structure. To build it wide enough now to accommodate those lanes in the future. We could build it, stripe it one lane each way, have it for pedestrian, bike or bike, whatever. The extra asphalt or concrete as recreational. Well, we're going to have the, we're going to have the multi. We're going to have the sidewalks. That's already part, part of it. Right. $8 million. All of the engineering is complete. All of the right of way is there. All of the environmental studies are done. I think it's a, it's just, I'm just going to say it and I'm going to walk away. I'll probably say it another time or two. But it's a huge missed opportunity to not make this wide enough to have two lanes in each direction. It's going to be a huge show point. Probably by design. But if this is effectively taking traffic off 29, as we hope it does, it's going to take more than I think people are thinking. And it's going to be a very viable road for our community. And I think to have two lanes in each direction is, is a great opportunity. We don't have to do it right there, but the structure to have the capacity, we're never going to come back and build another span. I'm not. I mean, my, my kids, we're not going to be around. Just, I just, for the record, I'm done. Any other comments or questions on Burke Moore? Okay. I think that wraps it up for me. Bill still extended. Chris, do you want to? Sure. Most of the work on Hillsdale, in fact, all the work is happening in the office still. So nothing visible to see. So not as exciting, but the consultants are engaged. Having received a slew of comments from VDOT on the most recent plans, we're looking to respond to those and get that, keep that moving along so it doesn't hold things up. There's also, as was mentioned earlier, the signal analysis continues a bit of back and forth, I guess, between the engineers. 
to figure out whether that's going to be viable or not. Uh, website is updated regularly. Next week uh, and in future weeks, there'll be some more work on uh, environmental reevaluation and revising the right of way limits uh, based upon any changes to the plans so that that process can continue. Uh, still shooting for a December uh, bid package to be put together uh, by the consultant. Chris, how does that December target? Look, I think it depends on how quickly these comments get there. Yeah. Uh, are there, well, as know, there are things that, I mean, VDOT can help with there. I think the quicker everything yeah. gets turned around and resolved, the better. Uh, yeah. I can tell you that the consultant that's the lead consultant on this. Is that McCormick Taylor? Yeah. Taylor has brought on two additional folks. Okay. To help. Uh, whatever you all can do to facilitate that, we appreciate it. Yeah, and we, we actually provided some additional clarification on some comments that should alleviate a lot of that okay. uh, early this week, I think okay. Monday. Okay. Because so. that's uh, galloping pretty quickly toward us. Yes. I've got an update on VDOT's right away acquisition. We've, uh, we are assisting with the U.S. Postal Service property. And we've received all the uh, operations and engineering concurrence from the Postal Service. So we're looking at a draft agreement date of potentially late this month. Um, that's probably about the earliest it would happen, but we are on a schedule with regard to acquisition of the USPS property. Okay. Okay. All right. Is still is, is on, the, on the same? Package schedule. I mean, are we thinking about those in terms of? We looked at the. I missed last meeting, so I'm trying to catch up. But the schedule that we see every. I'm sorry, we're going to see it today. Um, is that then added to that? We were going to add a column for those there. The construction. Yeah. yeah schedule. So we can watch that develop too. It hasn't changed. I mean, uh, it's Hillsdale is on that. Uh, that last update yeah. we did to the construction schedule, yeah. Hill, Hillsdale yeah. is on. But it doesn't yeah. go to construction until spring of next year. Okay. Yeah, but those those target dates are on there, as are the other ones. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think originally we were just doing the three, and then we, we were, and then we added on. Hillsdale yeah. and added. That's fine. That's possible. Okay. Yes. So this is yeah. a design bid build. Okay. Hillsdale is design bid build. And uh, when will some submissions of some drawings be available, like 60%, 100%, uh, whatever percentage. Is, are they dates for that? Well, we're there. You're finishing, he's finishing construction drawings now. Because remember, that was already had okay, been in, so, in the mix. So they're approaching 100%. Yes. Yes. So that's, is there a chance to just look at them? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I, well, I don't see why it wouldn't be. You don't have them in your pocket. <laughs> but, there, um, there is a pretty good uh, there's, on the website. Yeah. There's a graphical image yeah. uh, that's not engineering drawings, but showing the alignment and location. The solution the is 29? No, on the cities. On the cities, uh, and I'm not. There's a link on, there's a link on that from our website, too. Okay. I'll make sure you have. So if I go to solutions 29 and then. Look for the, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure the Hillsdale project, and there's a link okay. in there. Fair enough. I'll find it. <coughs> Does all the right of way have to be purchased before that can go out to the bid? Generally, on a bid yeah. build project, you want all of your right of way acquired. Well, so I think there's a certification free. that's yes. necessary yes. That's to say that the owner has access to all the all the right away. And that's something that's rarely, if ever, these days screwed with. I mean, you either have it or you don't. You know, we're waiting on, on another project that I helped with a little a little bit. There's just one piece that that there's no doubt that the owner's going to have access to it, but until they do. You don't get to wave the flag and say go. Yeah. 
So one of the items on this list, the, the last item is suggested right away moments are being revised or it's a little at some point. Are we, basically, are we feeling good that we're going to have the right of way right away by December and time to go out the bid? I, I don't think the revisions that are a result of the comments are not necessarily moving lines, moving right of way lines, more along the lines of making sure that they're identified for their use. When we say right of way, we also, that includes easements. So if we have an easement, it can't just be called a utility easement. It needs to have a specific purpose, and it has to be labeled as such. I think that's the majority of that uh, with the revisions that affect right-of-way are. There were not a lot of actual right-of-way critical comments that came in the last review. I'm not looking at wholesale changes of the alignment. Right. Some of the right-of-way hasn't been acquired at this point? The opposite answers. Uh, maybe we heard that different. There is right away that has not been through the acquisition process. Yet. Right. Yes. But some is some of the right away is acquired at this point. I believe so. I'm <clears throat> not familiar. I haven't got an update on right away acquisition. I mean, the post office property is in the works. Right. For one, that's one that we we know about. So. Philip. Yes, for a clarification on the plans, the right-of-way plans are available on the Route 29 Solutions B. website. Yeah, okay, the okay. PDFs on there. So. Okay. So under the Hillsdale project, yeah. Okay, okay. sure. Yes. Uh, can I, I'm gonna, before Dave's off the hook. Yes. <laughs> I, um, sorry, I missed last meeting again. Um, but I, how are the uh, uh, job fairs that were held by the contract? They yeah. Attended? Was there yes, we talked about it. Was round numbers, there were about 50 uh, uh, small business DBE contractors, reps from about 50 DBE or small business contractors that showed up for the DBE uh, fair. And I've learned since then, I don't know a number, but uh, Lane Corman has brought on some of those subcontractors that that showed up for different pieces of work. There were there were about 40 uh, job applicants that showed up for the job fair. And when we were here last week, uh, Lane Corman was interviewing some of those folks. And I got an update this morning that some of those people have been been hired. Just don't know a number. But the the general feeling was that they were well attended. Yes, the general feeling was that they were well well attended and productive. Not only were they those well attended, but people who were not able to come to those have been coming to Lane Foreman's office, picking up applications, dropping off applications, um, pretty steadily. So there is a lot of interest from the local community. Now, if just 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 through talking with different trades and, and veterans that I work with on occasion. I, some of the feedback has been, and I'm sure it's always this way when you don't get a job, but <laughs> that there isn't a lot of the, the, the bigger stuff didn't go well. And and so I don't know if there's if there continues to be a concerted effort to try to spend some money locally um, with with some of those trades. Um, and I, I you know I know laborers are often picked up at mm -hmm. the job location, but you know, we do have some qualified contractors, and and um, and I know it's up to Lane Corman at this point. But I hope we're doing everything we can to keep it keep it here. Just look at our. Honestly, we don't meddle in their bidding process. Uh, right here, usually what we see is when they get the contract signed, it goes through. Especially if it's a disadvantaged business or a SLAM certified business, then we see it through the forms that they have to fill out, uh, but generally until that, shortly before that work starts, we're just not familiar with who they've hired and who they haven't, but I know that they have a strong desire to hire people locally. Usually, not just people, but company. Usually the cost is cheaper. Yeah, I mean, typically it works out the bids come better because they're right down the street, but I just said it for the record. I'm glad to hear they were well attended, though. Yeah. Okay. 
The September 9th intersection closings. Um, I, I don't think Henry's alone in having had the thought that these were coming yeah. later rather than sooner. Uh, they were noted in the 30% uh, plans that we got back in March at each inter intersection. But what we didn't have until recently was uh, was a schedule. Uh, so the schedule is September September the 9th. Uh, those two signals will be coming out at uh, at Abelmall Square and the first Fashion Square entrance or the northernmost Fashion Square uh, entrance. Uh, once they come out, those are those are gone. Those aren't temporary. Uh, those will come out to allow access to uh, the, the median where considerable work will be starting soon as opposed to the utility work that we kind of saw out of the way. This, this, this will be some serious, some serious uh, work that will take place and where these come out will be part of Lane Corman's access into and out of the work the work area. The entrances at, uh, and we're not going to cover all the details here, but generally speaking, the entrances at Abomal Square and Fashion Square will, will remain open. Uh, the driveway entrances or whatever, you, however you want to refer to those entrances, but they will become right in and right out uh, only at those at those entrances. Uh, south, southbound, since they will no longer be able to make a left at the signalized intersections, uh, southbound uh, would either southbound access to Abelmall Square would either travel down to Rio Road and make a U-turn or travel to Rio Road, turn left, and then use that intersection uh, on Rio Road East. Southbound access to Fashion Square Mall would either go on down to the second entrance or the southernmost entrance at 29th place and use the signalized intersection there, or again turn turn left onto Rio Road and turn right onto Rio Road East to uh, get into Fashion Square Mall. Uh, I sent you a copy of the news release. You may have seen the paper yesterday that had uh, that had some print media in about these changes. This same ad will run again on Sunday, and a third, I think, then the following Sunday, I believe, is the schedule for for this ad starting on. Um, <laughs> Monday, the 24th, starting on the 24th, there'll be six weeks of, uh, of television and radio advertising, or radio messages, radio spots, TV and radio spots, both on cable TV, broadcast TV, and on, uh, on radio. Those will run for six weeks, then they'll be off a week, on a week, off a week, and on a week. There are two upcoming uh, UVA football games, and I don't remember the dates. They're two Saturdays. Two, it's two weekends in September. Two weekends in September. I just don't remember the, the dates. Uh, that there will be uh, spots running on UVA's uh, message, message board. Uh, those, um, the, the total cost of placing these, of buying the ads and the fees for placing the ads are round numbers, about 28, round numbers total, about $101,000. Uh, 28,000 for radio, 26 for cable TV, 22 for broadcast TV, 10 for newspaper, five for the UVA boards, 
and then all the placement fees were another $10,000. So this is some serious money being invested as part of the project to not to sell the project, to make the point that these intersections are closing, that these signals are coming out, and referring people to the website for more information, where if you looked at the website today, you see a big pop-up kind of version of this that shows up on the home page, and you can either click out of it and get it out of your way, or you can click it, which takes you to another portion of the website where the graphic is repeated, and then there's a stream of information about how you can get in or out of the area. The TV spot, the TV spot, while it's very brief, will make the point that entrances to Abemaw Square, Fashion Square, Rio Hill Shopping Center, then I think the other area, since there is no easy name for that Southwest Quadrant, Rio Hill South to 29th Place, that all of those entrances remain open. All of that was put together and launched actually Wednesday, yesterday, with the beginning of that ad. The TV spots, the radio spots, all the voiceovers have been done, and those are ready to go on Monday. Any questions about this? I have one question that relates somehow to the access to Fashion Square. If I'm on Vermont Drive southbound, and then eventually making that turn, so I'm now technically eastbound, and I get to that T intersection, can I only turn right, or can I turn left as well? Next page. Next page. Always ahead of you. Next page. As far as the temporary intersections and crossovers go, Burkmar, the Burkmar temporary intersection provides access to Burkmar from both northbound and southbound, and to and from Burkmar to 29 northbound and southbound. So if you were at Burkmar and you were at that T, you could go south to the signalized intersection, or you could go north and go make a right in. I could go either direction. You could go either direction. However, if I'm on 29, I cannot use that to make a U-turn, the Burkmar crossover. If I'm southbound on 29, correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. From Burkmar, I can go both directions. From Burkmar, you can go both directions. If I'm on 29, I cannot use it for a U-turn. You either go on Rye Road East or go to the southern entrance. Which then brings up the question, right? The end of that T intersection, right? Facing it. Are you going to put up one of those Joe Pizza orange signs which say it's Fashion Square and one arrow pointing left and one pointing right? Because I think Karen would like that. Well, let's talk about that on the next agenda item, which is the Todd's thing. I'm not, I don't know about that. I don't think. Temporary Joe's Pizza. I remember you gave us a sample. Yeah. Well, that's kind of morphed into this Todd's construction signing thing. We'll talk about it on the next, again, the next page. Again, the next page. Yes. You're using the permanent signs as temporary signs? Well, we'll see. Let me just finish through here. So that's access at the Burkmar temporary crossing. The temporary signal and crossover at just south of Myers Drive, north of Abemaw Square, is only for U-turns from northbound 29 to southbound 29. 
And folks have pointed out some very legitimate con concerns about how people may try to use that cross crossover. We're going to have to, I think, have a good conversation with Avalon County law enforcement, with Millard Stoddard, because that crossover will not allow left turn. Now, remember, will not allow what people try to do here. We're going to have to be careful. But it's not for a left turn to Myers Drive from northbound 29, and it's not for left turns from southbound 29 into Gardens Boulevard. It's only for the U-turn from northbound to southbound 29. You need a sign there that says, I think the U-turn's on me. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. Right on that. I think another thing about Gardens Boulevard is people will try to go jump straight across. To make that U-turn. To make the U-turn. Yeah. At Gardens Boulevard, that's needs gonna a, be a, that's gonna be a if right it, out only or yes. And it may, I mean, they, there are those temporary, you know, pylons that are this big that might wrap. I don't know how to do it, but you're, it's it's going to be tried at some point, mm -hmm. and it'll be late at night, and, and they'll think they can get away with it. But. You know, there's temporary pylons. That's Joel loves those. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure he does. Not the big orange cones. I'm, I'm sure, sure he does. Very small, reflective seat. The rubber huh? balance. I don't know the technical terms of bone and paper. What are they called? Rubber ballots? Look like pipes. They're flexible. Delineators. They're flexible. Delineators. Flexible delineators. Another term you use at a party. Um, Philip, what, what would you can I ask a question about the southbound traffic on 29 that wants to go to Alamal Square? Can't make the left at the closed intersection. So they're going to go up to the light yes. and have two options. They can go left yes. and go in over by the grocery store or they can U-turn yes and go back down and go in the right and yes. right out like, am I crazy or does that have a no U-turn sign but you're not crazy okay that does have a no U-turn so sign two, two, it's two things you're gonna, you got a running green coming out of uh, Raya north on 29 that that will conflict with that U-turn motion so there'll have to be some signage coming off of Raya that green you know yield to Right on red yields to the U-turn. The sign that we have on hand now that will be installed. Oh, you're ahead on, sorry. 29. <laughs> you just say you got it. Is a no, is U-turn yields to right turns. Yield to, okay. Just as it does on northbound. On northbound. Turn now, today. Because northbound today. today there's going to be a lot of volume making that turn. Yeah, that, we have to keep the, have to adjust that, maybe. careful eye there. I think you're going to, and there's a lot of moving right turn traffic going northbound on 29. That has the potential to stack. Right. Are y'all still planning to adjust the signal timing there on Ryan? For those U turn moves? Quite honestly, the, where we have the high volume of traffic coming from Ryan to 29 northbound is in PMP go. People are trying to get them. The rest of the day is not that high but if we adjust that then we compound the problem in the evening peak hour so it's 22 hours a day maybe even 23 hours a day it's really not problematic it's that one to two hours a day okay. that we don't want there to be any issues the day, in either area i mean isn't this something that we will yes. monitor because what it is today may not be what it becomes once we make these changes we're just going to have to really watch it close and I'm really interested in making sure we sit down with Sergeant Stoddard, Sergeant, Sergeant Stoddard, yes. and uh, ha have a plan for watching the, this, this particular area. I mean, I think we, you know, I don't believe we can get it south any further. I mean, it, it needs to go where it needs to go. and. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be. Tr of course, tricky. that turning movement doesn't exist after the construction. No, those people have. To, Nina, the, those people have that U turn at the intersection, which will be below, has to be a left turn and then come in the left entrance. They won't have the opportunity to go northbound 29, will it? From southbound 29. The local lanes. The local lanes. No. You come up the local lanes post construction. Right. You 
turn left to go across the bridge, do you have the opportunity at that point to go down the local lanes to turn right into Albemarle Square? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's essentially the U-turn movement. Yes. That's a planned movement. Yes. Okay. That's a planned movement in both directions. Yes. And yes, those both come out in 2016. So just to recap there, recap on the September 9th thing, I took a little deep breath myself when we realized that, you know, hey, this is time for this to happen. It was noted on the plans that we, two of those little small notes, on the plans that we saw in March, which kind of was a heads up. But at that time, we didn't have a date. Now we do. Now it's happening. And VDOT's made a serious commitment to communicating this to folks. There's been a lot of emails or communication pieces that have gone out over the last couple days to the Chamber of Commerce, to Lou, I think it was a list of about 500 businesses that's part of this list that the county and VDOT have accumulated. The Chamber has re-blasted it out to their membership. It's on Albemarle County's website. It's on Albemarle County's website. And this is $100,000 well spent in terms of communicating what are major changes. It's also an opportunity to communicate watchful workers, which is important as well. Because, as I said, we're migrating from seeing some folks behind some silt fence and barrels at SunTrust to people working in the roadway. So I'm pleased with how the messaging has all fallen out and pleased with what the TV ads and radio spots that will start on Monday. Just remember, six weeks, then a week off, a week on, a week off, and a week on. The two games in September. One idea I just wanted to throw out there, it may not be any good, but I was thinking in terms of targeting the people that most need to see that message, the people who stop at that light to turn left, we're talking about the southbound 29, and they turn left in Albemarle Square. People who most need to see that are the people that are routinely doing that, who will be at that light, making that left turn up until September 9th. I wonder, would it make sense to try to put a sign there, maybe in the median next to that left turn lane, that says, notice this movement is closing for alternatives. Go to route29solutions.com or such. The problem is the median is about this wide. Yeah. Right. So it's challenging to put a message board out there anywhere that a lot of folks can see. I believe we probably will be putting the message board up pretty soon in advance of that, but it won't be very detailed. Right. We usually keep some very short messages. Messages up in advance of that change in traffic. And those and those crossovers will be barricaded. I mean, it'll be it's going to be pretty obvious on September the ninth. Yeah, I know. But clearly, September ninth, they'll wake up and they'll say, "Oh, I can't turn left there anymore." But and this is obviously the point of VDOT's ad campaign. I'm really glad that you all put so much effort into that. But the extent September ninth, somebody's already become aware of. Oh, today I've got to go down and make that U-turn. And I'm just thinking, the people who are turning left at those areas today, there's some way to just, where they're turning left. Heads up, you all need to go here for more. Well, your, your VMS will do, your variable message sign, your variable message sign, I think, will serve the intent of what Morgan is, 
it's going to make people about. alert that there's going to be a change yeah. right at that location. Now, as far as what that change is, it's going to be very difficult to do that and describe what that change is. No, no, yeah, usually two things. That. Right, it's all. We yeah, Let, let's let's be thinking about what that message yeah. is going to say because we really need to roll those out there. Well, I think it's going to be similar to what we saw at 29 by yeah. the polar grounds, alerting people that there's a change coming. And, and based on the number of emails and calls we got about that, people pay attention to that. When they see that variable message board there, that will change the message board, uh, they, they do notice it. It makes them alert, okay, there's a change coming. Let me go see if I can pay attention to what this is. Then maybe they see the newspaper ad or they hear the radio ad. And it, alerts them to pay. Well, here, here's the one thing I know. We're not going to do too much communications. And on September the 9th, not everybody is going to be aware that it closed. Right. I mean, that's, you don't think we'll just have to rainy. do our, yes. do our best. <laughs> and, uh, I suppose you can also, you not may not be able to do this, but the shopping centers themselves, for the people who are currently taking those left turns to get out of those areas, Helpful for them to put something up informing those people too. The Henry Weinstein signing during construction item. <laughs> the 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 next next item, the Todd, remember it's tourist oriented directional signing, and we sort of co-opted this program a bit. To say let's you let's use it during construction to uh, to to help people know how, what businesses what types of services are available where and in a manner that possibly could continue after con, after construction. Uh, the, the area, and we have mentioned this before, that the area or the zone within which this program will be implemented is between, goes from Woodbrook down to Dominion Drive, and it doesn't just include the Rio intersection, but other intersections as appropriate, depending on where a qualifying business is located. Uh, we're not waiving. We're not waiving the qualifying criteria, although we have reached some agreement on a few little relaxations here and there. If you don't strictly meet the seating criteria, for example, for a place that serves food, well, if you got a chair and a table, we may not get too excited during the temporary period over how many seats are there. Generally speaking, we'll still apply the qualifying criteria, which we linked to last last time. Yesterday, VDOT started delivering uh, applications. To well, remember, the application fee is being waived, the installation fee is being waived, and the annual fee is being waived until 2017. Yesterday, I think VDOT and Lane Corman together started, or maybe just you and Andrew, uh, started delivering applications to the list that we have now of businesses that we know qualify between Woodbrook and Dominion. That list is being reviewed to make sure we capture the full uh, list of qualifying businesses. The list now has 30 plus businesses on it. I think Lou and Andrew got out to about 25. We're able to speak to 25 of those 30 yesterday. So that list is being updated. Virginia Logos, if you remember, is PDOT's contractor that handles this signing, this signing program. Uh, VDOT uh, and Virginia Logos uh, are working on an accelerated schedule for the turnaround of these signs. Virginia Logos talked to their manufacturer this week and said, look, we're going to need a lot of signs in a short amount of time, and they've got some agreement there to work on a two-week turnaround to get the sign fabricated that says 
Chris Reed's hot dog shop, you know, two miles with an arrow to the to the left on it. Um, installation will begin in October, and on set on our not next meeting, but meeting after next, the 17th, we will have a a uh, uh, we will have a presentation to review intersection by intersection that will show us what signs, what businesses will be signed at each one of those intersections, northbound and southbound. Uh, the fee expert, I gave you, and this is my fault, I gave you a bad date at the last meeting. The fee expiration period, the fee waiver period is August 31st, 2017, not October 31st. Uh, so on for those qualifying businesses that are on a part of this temporary signing plan and want to stay on a Todd's sign uh, going forward would begin paying their annual fee on October the 1st, 2017, which I think is 450 bucks. So the installation fee, the application fee is waived, but on October 1st, 2017, they would begin paying their annual uh, annual fee. Uh, this program uh, is really coming together in a in a good in a good way. There were a lot of hurdles to get over here. Uh, there were a lot of hurdles to get over. We'll just leave, leave it at that because potentially this bunch of a bunch of signs, and it's more than VDOT would normally be putting up uh, as part of a program. But we've got agreement all the way around, and frankly, not just agreement all the way around, but uh, what's the right word? Agreement, understanding. Appreciation for the issue all the all the way around, and said, "Let's let's make this thing happen." Now, I can assure you that somebody's going to want to sign that's not going to qualify, and uh, that's going to happen. And there's going to be some no's among the yeses. Uh, that's the way the way it's going to probably go. Yes. At the end of the. Free period. Yes. Uh, will the relaxation of the qualification criteria go away? That'll go away. That'll go away. And that's being explained to the businesses up front. That, you know, hey, Morgan, you don't have enough seats, but you want to you want to participate. That's going to be cool for a couple of years, but then you either need to meet the qualifying criteria or your sign would come down. Unless the qualifying criteria change between now and or the and business then. changes, and or the business changes, or uh, you know, but but when I just when there's just the seating, probably one of maybe a couple areas that might be relaxed. The type of business you either fit or you you don't. Well, that's what I was going to ask about. I'm, are these, are these category one Todd's qualifications or category two decisions? Well, I think they're both, aren't they're, they? They're both. They're both. The yeah. category two is the gas, food, and lodging, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Those are the highway, I think. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm just uh, reviewing the qualifications, and it looks, I mean, I mean, you could, you could bend, you know, some, some interpretations. Some of I mean, I don't know what this fine print is behind these, but yeah, I mean, a stadium, a zoo, conference center. I've got a conference room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, golf course, I could put a putting green in the showroom. You could. So I mean, I'm, 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 well, look, the intent here, the intent is to be inclusive. Yeah, no, I mean, that the intent is right. to be inclusive. Uh, the intent is to be inclusive. If that intent and in inclusiveness, B 
bends a qualifying criteria that remains a qualifying criteria come October 2017, then you may not be able to stay. You may not be able to stay on. But uh, I think this is a good program. It combines con it combines concepts that some of you all have carried forward. It includes some concepts of, gee, you know, if we're going to do something temporary, can we do it in a way that could possibly be be permanent? It does not tack signs on the overhead signs or the ground mounted signs. The overhead signs are going to be the overhead signs. The ground mounted signs are going to be the ground mounted signs. And this program will be will use that Todd's blue and white type sign that all of you all are for, familiar with uh, at the appropriate intersection. So uh, for a business up that, that's really up closer to Woodbrook, well, their Todd signing will be will be there there, uh, and spreading this out really allows us to include more more businesses. Said we started off with actually for some reason I want to say there's 36 businesses 36. on that 34 34 businesses on that list we talked to 25 24 of them yesterday uh, get to the rest of them uh, here this here this week if there are more and the reason we're having the list reviewed is not to take anybody off but to make sure there's not somebody left left out. And three of those 34 already have signs out there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Lou, and I, I think this is fair for me to say, Lou has talked to Karen, and uh, Karen is going to kind of be the, the lead the contact person on checking with the food court businesses uh, and other businesses on the mall, on the mall property. So it's 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 a good program, and now that we've kind of got it tied down, the the next step is uh, is for us to see the the layout and take some phone calls, probably. Any questions on that? All right, the overhead signs. Last time we met. This is where we landed, and this is where we are. Uh, the northbound sign, uh, the northbound overhead sign for the through lanes, the overhead sign for the uh, local lanes, and we've got the Dave Covington uh, uh, solution here that where the, the top the top banner will tie to the color scheme for the ground mounted signs uh, and it will say local and business and then for the southbound uh, it will include the, the UVA uh, logo and that's not a football or intended to be a football it, it's just so that the logo stands out and this design is the same design that you will see on new over, well, it's on overhead signs now uh, at 250 and 29, and it will be on new overhead signs at 250 and, and 29. So all of that will tie to, together. Uh, the sign will, will, the Lynchburg also ties to signing further uh, south. As you get further south, that's where you'll see your signing to 64. That will be closer to the 250 bypass. <clears throat> Emmett Street will be on here to give the local flavor that they, these through lanes take you to, to Emmett Street. Charlottesville will be on the local, uh, the local signs, the local and business uh, lanes. And then we'll have to deal with the through truck issue uh, appropriately as part of our of our signing plan. Uh, with with coming to this resolution last week, I think took a, a load off our designers. And while they may not exactly think that this is what they would have all chosen, <laughs> doesn't look that bad. So to speak. I would 
I think it was great. What are they objecting to? Uh, no, they're not. They're not. That's, I'm teasing. Uh, I just have an idea to see how much they would object. <laughs> uh, can you go to the other slide? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you go to the other set? There. 29 on the one left is nicely in the middle. Uh, on the one on the right, well, 29 and 631 are kind of sharing uh, importance. Uh, I probably violate all the rules, but if it was up to me, I would put 29 centered and then have two 631 to the side. But that probably violates the rules. So, uh, I just I'll look. <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing would then apply to the other two sides where 29 is always centered and where it leads to that is um, shifted to, to the right okay. we'll take a look at that's that. probably in violation of article 225 dash uh, every, everything we've asked them to do by, is violated some, yeah. some article but I would like it, you know, yeah. you know, 29 <laughs> always being central. Not that it uh, gets confused, well, okay, they're two equivalent votes. No, it's essentially 29. He looks good. Um, I, did, I wasn't here, so I didn't see it, but I saw it with his meeting, and I think it's a great, you know, consolidation of everybody's thoughts. I mean, it's That's amazing right. how, like, it, all of a sudden it popped. Yeah, yeah. The idea was around for a reason. What, what? What happens when you get up to the light at Raya? Yeah, here, here's what here's what Dave and I are going to talk about seeing next, now that we have this. Now that we have this, what we need to see is a full, a full plan so that we can take northbound and say, all right, here's northbound, here's the overhead signs, now I'm on the local lanes, and here's the ground-mounted sign for, for, the, for the intersection. Which and what that specifically? I'm, I'm thinking about Charles. Oh yeah, yeah. Where am I going to get to Charlotte when I get to the top of that hill? Top of you're, that. Well, southbound. You're going left, right? right. So, well, that's to be a continuation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I just, yes. That's always been my question. Is yes, and that, that's that's what we need to see now. So okay, now I'm on the local lane. Right. What am I? What am I seeing? Yeah. Right. You what am I to the right and be ready to turn back. And, yeah. but what am I, what am I and we need to see that in a schematic so that we know that, okay, the overhead sign's about 850 feet out, and now I'm up on the local lane. Yeah, yeah. On, a, on a plan, you need to know yeah. where they Yeah, are. and that's what, that's, yeah. that's what we'll, we will see. Uh, I'll just say, as, go I'm on. I'm most interested from a, from a structural standpoint, not, not how the signage is all going to lay out, but which direction we're going to send Charlotte yeah. to drive. And I think that's a lot more part Great yeah. decision made. I don't care one way or the other. I just yeah. thought it was worth talking about. What about the trucks? I mean, we raised that last Yeah, no, that's why I say we're going to have to sign a program. No, no trucks or no trucks. I mean, you can deal with that in a lot of places, and the signing will just have to appropriately re reflect it. Um, I don't know if anybody here is participating or if anybody listening is participating because I'm keeping a long arm from this, but we are through the currently doing the kind of second second processing through the focus groups for the name and uh, if you'll recall, it took all the individuals who attended all the focus group meetings and they sent them one final questionnaire. Uh, it's about 90 people to follow up on namings, on names for the intersection and whether or not there is a desire to name quadrants and if there is or areas, whatever we end up calling. And if there is, what those names might might be. Um, if you remember, I've asked SIR to come back to us at our next meeting, September 3rd, and say, okay, we've, we've done our part. You know, here's what the focus groups say, say. We're going to take what the focus groups say and make that information available to, to the county for whatever you would like to do, to do with it. And then we're going to 
come back here before the end of the year, near the end of the year, and hopefully together we will form a recommendation to, to VDOT. Uh, minority opinions will be allowed, dissenting opinions will be, will be allowed, and we'll make a recommendation to VDOT, and then VDOT's going to just have to make, uh, make a decision on these naming issues. What happened last week, Pete, that was real, our last meeting, which was good, is we were sort of getting the names up here, and well, what if it says this, but how's that going to work down the road? And Dave, in his just uniquely quiet but on the mark way, said, well, what if we just kept the sign blue and called it local and business? And Everybody was saying, "Why didn't I say that first? <laughs> no, it was really a good. It was really a good idea, and I, I think I think this sign exercise kind of laughed about it. But trust me when I say that these are different than what normally would come out of this. Uh, uh, normally, what would come out of a signing." A signing plan. There are some very small things here that we won't get into. That uh, so that been, took some discussion. So you have been stretching some rules, is what you say. Okay. Good. Some would say more than stretching. Yeah. <laughs> to the but no, to the every expert. It looks pretty normal to me. I'm uh, I'm certain that everything here that we see has a place inside the rules. It's not very outrageous. But we'll get, uh, we'll get that larger, that schematic, so now we can see, all right, this overhead sign, what's happening everywhere else? All right. That is it for, uh, for our agenda items. Henry, any? Um, do business. You're going to make sure you pass your stuff off to today, uh, Chris. Thank you. Just one announcement, and that's on September 9th at the board county board meeting. Uh, staff will be going forward with some recommendations for temporary signs oh. for the businesses during this construction period. Uh, if you've got questions, I, I I'll have more information about it at the next meeting on September 3rd. But, okay. Uh, if you have questions in the meantime, either get with me or avail. So, Mark, this would be for on on the properties for the so, for the okay. businesses, and it'll allow for some shared signs and okay. some things. But it's, okay, uh, trying to find ways to make it a little easier during okay. this construction period. Okay, when is it? September 9th is when it's scheduled to go to the board. Now we're meeting on the third. And we meet on the third. Yeah, would it make sense that on the third he could give us a little presentation? Absolutely. What you're going to. Yeah, Absolutely. That's fine with the group. Yes. Absolutely. That would be good. Okay. So we do, do a rehearsal with the. So there'll be proposed ordinance language? Is that it, it's it's a re just to go to a resolution intent saying this is some of the, what we want, are considering doing, and you want us to go ahead and work. On, it's asking the board, you want us to go ahead and work on this. It's not asking him for a final vote on September 9th. But we're, it's kind of a check-in for us, and then you're presenting it. Yes, yeah, so and getting some direction from the board. Well. But is all is well. You can tell us this next week. One thing I would be interested in at the next meeting is part of that update is, and on this day we'll make a decision about what we're going to do, whatever that day might be. If you get that, <laughs> I'll get it. I can't. I can't promise the board's going to do anything uh, on well, this particular day. Say yes or no. I mean, say no. I can tell you what we plan to take it to. Yeah, the okay. Yeah. All right. That, that's all you need <laughs> yeah. yeah. to okay. All right. Show us what you want to show them. That's right. Yeah. Or no. Right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. All right. We, we'll be all. glad to talk to you about yeah. okay. what we've got. Thank you. Thank you. Mark? Or, uh, Mark? <laughs> I'm all set. Please. Pete? Oh, no. Thanks. Um, just two uh, quick things that I wanted to tell you is that. After the meeting today, as soon as Chip gets here, John Lynch and Chip are signing the agreement that passes the 200 grand to uh, for the business assistance from the state to the MPO. After he signs that, we're moving the meeting to the board. After. 
and that'll that'll take care of uh, that'll take care of that. I understand Chip gave me a little uh, update from the business assistance subcommittee. Lee's here. I understand that ten small business owners have been added. So I don't know who the I don't know who they are, but uh, I appreciate that. Not that Pete wasn't a good Pete's not a good. No, I'm taking my place. I'm out. You're out. <laughs> No, no, it's, uh, it's a good I, representation. The county did a nice job. Good. And, um, and I was impressed with the engagement coming back. So Great. Great. I just wanted to share that with everybody. And our next meeting is September the 3rd. And I'm going to have the discussion one more time about the Burkmar Bridge. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to have that. Thank you. Sit down and have that discussion. I appreciate it. Okay. All righty. Oh, yes. <laughs> See you on the third. <laughs>